Susan sent in this. She has a light fixture and she broke one of them and she hasn't been able to get it replaced. Here in this picture, you can see the missing part. And she contacted me in what must have been a, a truly extreme state of desperation. I think she went to glass manufacturers, all kinds of places to try to get it replaced and just didn't succeed. So she wound up on our channel and said, can you cast another one of these? The short answer is probably, yeah, I think we can make a mold of this and cast it. Uh, but how close it will match, I do not know. So we're once again in the realm of the unknown and we'll see if we can get her a part that matches the rest of the light fixture. I'm gonna begin this piece by making a rubber blanket because it's gonna be a rubber blanket mold with a fiberglass shell. And the first step is to build a form that's going to hold the silicone rubber that will ultimately be the parting line between the front and back half of the mold. Let's fire up the heat gun. Get the waxer going. Just get this, these parts waxed up nice. Now we have the part set back in the case. And what we're going to do is we're gonna run a bead of oil clay around it. I could run wax around it, but I think the oil clay is gonna be quicker and I think it's gonna be easier to clean up afterwards. All right, this should be ready to go. Let's pour some rubber. I don't wanna start here. Let's start over here. This is just a dump pour. Shouldn't be too complicated, but we want it to flow down the sides. In a shallow mold like this, the rubber is gonna to tend to wanna to rise out pretty quickly. So even if you do catch some bubbles, it usually is not as big a problem because they have plenty of time to rise out. Okay, now we'll see how even that is. Might be a little low on this end, but we're all right. This complicated edge is the top of the lampshade, but it's the bottom of the mold. And so I need to build a landing for the parting line. And there's no way that I'm gonna be able to calculate all of the compound angles. I mean, there's literally compound angles in every direction. <laughs> There's no way that I'm going to be able to figure out all those angles and then do like some sort of measured CAD drawing to produce a pattern to make the landing out of this uh, for this area. But uh, the easy way to do it is just to cob it together with a bunch of little pieces of cardboard, which is what I'm doing. So it's just uh, super glue. Thanks again to Starbond for providing the super glue because it came in very handy on this project. And uh, it's not going to be pretty, I guarantee you that, but it will work. And all it has to do is support my favorite thing in the whole world, which is a clayed up parting line. <laughs> you know me, you know how much I love these clayed up parting lines. And when you see how much work it takes to create a parting line like this, uh, it's just a tremendous amount of time and labor. And it's to be avoided whenever possible. But this particular project and this particular shape meant that it's what we had to do. So now let's break out our old friend beeswax. I'm gonna use a finer brush because I don't want to get wax all over the glass because I'll just have to clean it off later. And I don't want to. But I need to make sure that this cardboard is well waxed because it is gonna get some oil clay on it. But there may be areas where the rubber will actually touch the cardboard. And in those areas, I want to make absolutely certain I have no issues with adhesion. I don't want the silicone rubber sticking to my cardboard. That just would be a pain to deal with. But this little fan blender brush is perfect for the job of fairly precisely laying on beeswax. Of course, I'm pulling it out of my crock pot here, which is most handy. I have to say, not a sponsor, but I'm really digging this little Wagner handheld heat gun. This little gun is perfect size for most of my projects. It, uh, it really lets me put the heat where I want it. It's worked out nicely. All right. Excellent. Wax work done. Now we break out the wonderful, the magnificent, and the happy oil clay lumps. Oh, now we have to go around all along the edge 
all the way around and very, very carefully build a nice clean oil clay ridge. So I'll be pushing the oil clay, rolling out little worms, pushing the oil clay up underneath the form, underneath the glass, and making a nice tight seal, making a nice smooth, part clean parting line. So there's gonna be some time in here. Compare how long it would take me to cut this parting line uh, in, a, in a normal cut mold. And you can see why I'm such a fan of cut molds. But there are projects, and you will encounter them, or you will create them, where you have to use this technique. And it's good to know how to do it. We are ready to build this blanket. But let me stir it up good. I'm not gonna de-air it because this is a blanket mold and I'm expecting the bubbles to rise out all on their own. So I'm just dripping it out into a stream. This is just gonna be the print coat. This is the coat that's gonna capture all of the detail of the original part. So any bubbles that you catch are gonna show in the final casting because this mold will never get pressurized because I don't have a tank anywhere near big enough to pressurize it. So we're not gonna pressure cast this resin. We're just gonna go and use our best techniques when it's time to pour the resin. And I wanna get this stuff spread out into a, into a thin film as quick as I can. And I also want by drizzling, I'm also breaking up bubbles. So that's good. Yeah, boy, it's starting to go off. We gotta get this thing down and dirty. Now we come in with the brush, come in behind it with the brush, and I make sure I'm brushing out bubbles everywhere, 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 everywhere. I'm gonna brush out bubbles. All right. Good. All right, let's mix some rubber. First thing you notice about this rubber is it's not light blue, it's pink. What this rubber is, is a trowel on type of rubber. It's, a, it's not a pouring rubber. It's a brush on mold buildup style of rubber. So it tends to stay where you put it. What I like to do with it is I like to push the rubber parallel with these cracks, these joints, so that I'm pushing the rubber into the joint ahead of it. The blue coat is going to be the coat that's gonna transfer all the details to the casting but I still want to make sure that I'm pushing the bubbles out in front of the brush so that in those seams, there are no bubbles. Same drill up on this part, pushing the rubber ahead of the seams. Now down in here, I've got kind of a deep pocket in here. I really want to make sure that I work the rubber down, 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 push the rubber down into that pocket like there so I don't have a big giant bubble sitting in there. And this is the whole process. This is just building up coats of rubber in a blanket style, brush on style mold. This is how you do it. Basically just frosting a beautiful cake. Just frosting a big, beautiful cake. You do not want to make a mold that's floppy. It's got to be just thick enough to hold its shape, but not so thick that you're wasting an expensive amount of rubber. You don't want to be wasting rubber, but you need to use enough. You need to use enough to make a, a good mold. It's got to have body. It's got to retain its shape so that it doesn't flop around like a rubber balloon. You just can't have that. Now, if you'll notice, I'm back to the blue rubber. You can mix and match. And what I'm doing is I'm putting a fair amount of accelerator, which with this stuff, <laughs> this rubber accelerator means like drops be very very little and what that does is it causes this material to gel much much faster with the accelerant in it it really does cure up quick and so you don't have to uh, wait so long between batches and also it gels quicker so it stays put better so that a big advantage is to using the accelerant while the rubber is still liquidy you can help the bubbles with a heat gun just play a heat gun over the surface and you can pop bubbles as they rise up. And the heat, of course, doesn't hurt the cure either. It's going to speed the cure along. This stuff is already gelling. And that's good. It's already gelling. 
Looking pretty good. I'm not seeing a lot of bubbles rising up. We've got all the silicone work done on this side, built it all up, even put the little knobby bumpies in there. I made a short video out of making these little knobbies. Let's get some parting agent put on here. All right, let's lay the gel coat on this boy. Time to put on a gel coat. Mixed up a 70 gram batch. Turned out to be just about what I needed. And you just brush it on, just like this. There's no magic to it. All right, pretty good. These spots you're looking at is where the resin pulled away from the rubber. And those are known as holidays. And all things covered in them, as you can see. And uh, actually that's a good thing because that just means that the uh, release, the silicone release, is doing its job. And that, uh, and that epoxy is not going to want to stick to that rubber. Get the acetone out of the brush. Let's just go ahead and double coat these holidays. Usually the second coat takes care of the vast majority of the holidays. And because I don't have to coat the whole thing, I just have to cover these holes. I only mixed up a small amount of the gel material. I believe I got them. They really don't hurt anything. Uh, these are not car bodies we're making here. These are not, these are just mold cases. So if there's little holidays in the gel coat, no one's gonna care and it's not gonna hurt the function of the mold at all. The gel coat dried and to prep it for fiberglassing, I smoothed it out with epoxy sculpt. And that's all the gray patches you see there bumps and hollows and other geography <laughs> landscape on a shape are kind of hard to fiberglass. It's easier to fiberglass something smooth. And it also made it a lot stronger because the epoxy sculpt and the gel coat and the laminating resin are all epoxy. It all plays really nice together. Four or five layers of fiberglass cloth and it will make a nice shell. This is like a tortoise shell now, hard as a rock. Very good, that should be sufficient. Let's see if we can't take the supports off of this side. Let's just see how this is going to go. I might cut it out rather than try to tear it off. Let's just see what's underneath all this nonsense. There you go. This is going to give me a better view of the back side. There we go. All this good hard work building supports. Throw it in the garbage, did its job. Now, it's my job is to get this thing apart without taking the glass off of the first half. I don't want to disturb the first half of the mold. All right, so far so good. You can see the glass of our model. Good, that came off good. That came off good. Looking good, so far perfect. Gonna have to take some clay out. This is why I hate clay up molds. See that clay sitting in there? Every little bit of that clay is gonna have to be removed carefully, meticulous. All this clay along here, all has to come out and be cleaned, all nice and clean, all along the edges. No getting around it, has to be done. And uh, that's why there's a lot of work to clay up molds. Tremendous amount of work in clay up molds. Well, as you can see, I have a I have a wicked cleanup to do. Lots of clay, lots of fiberglass, lots of mold trimming. So there's some work involved here. Got yet another fiberglass splinter in my hand. Yay. That's always fun. Love those. That beeswax does its job once again. Okay, it's basically taken apart. It's going to take me some time to go through and perfectly clean, trim, finish everything. And then we're ready to put the second half of the mold on. I got the mold all cleaned out. Now what we need to do is right in here, we need to put our funnel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a vent, a single vent right there and a funnel right there. See, this is why I'm such a hoarder. I keep old stuff so that I can recycle it and make easy, quick use out of it. I broke out the wax tools and I made a pretty little mess. The end result of which was I expanded that little sprue and funnel into this. And that is gonna just work perfecto. 
Break out the sticky wax and let's get this thing installed. Maybe I should fill that up. What do you guys think? I'll fill that up just for fun and games. Let's fill this up just for fun and games. Just like that. All right, that was perfect. That worked like a champ. Okay, now let's break out the sticky wax. Put it on here. This is where we're gonna get sticky wax on the glass, but no worries, we'll clean it off later. And we're gonna get sticky wax in this little bridge here. And more importantly, we're gonna get sticky wax right in here and in here. Just gonna make sure that this little piece sits in here, comes in and stays put nicely. Get it to just fit right in there. Now we broke that out. Let's put a little sticky wax right there. And let's just run it to the edge right there, just like that. Let's just run a piece. Then we're gonna put this sprue right there, just like that. So we put this vent on, let's attach it. I wanna fill that in under there, like that. So we're building up this vent so it's good size. So the air is just gonna flow up that channel right there. Just filling in underneath this funnel as it attaches to the rubber. And this wax will lay on this rubber okay. It doesn't stick to it, it'll pop right off. This to me is why wax tools are so important for mold making and casting because you have to do so much of this kind of custom sculpting to get stuff to fit. Looks good, I'll come around, I'll clean all that up. And we are ready to start building the second side of this mold. We really don't want this second half of this rubber mold to stick to this. So we're going to use parting agent. Spray on some parting agent. And I'm going to be fairly liberal around the edges. Because I really, really don't want it to stick. So I want to get it in everywhere. I'm going to miss the whole thing so it has an even coat on it. I'm gonna have to really ventilate the studio after I gas myself out with this spray. Like I said, I'm being fairly liberal with it. I wanna make sure. Very light coats, but I wanna coat everything. All angles. I mixed up some rubber. This is the coat that's gonna reproduce the surface of this glass. Now you might ask me if I de-aired the rubber in the vacuum chamber before I put it out there, and the answer is no, I didn't. And the reason that I didn't is because there's no need to. When you sprinkle rubber around like this, it's such a thin film of rubber that the bubbles rise right to the top. So you don't have to de-air it. It'll de-air itself. By the time this rubber cures, all the air bubbles will have risen out. And of course, we're gonna brush it out too. Now when you scrape a cup like this, that's when you generate a ton of bubbles. And so there will be bubbles in this scraped out rubber, but they'll rise right out. This is a 24 hour to full cure. You can see how remarkably few bubbles there are, even now. And it hasn't even begun to rise out, really. I have it pretty well layered all over the place. The other thing that will happen is just the mechanical action of the brush is going to cause the bubbles to pop out. First coat is done. Let's do another coat. Let's coat it up. Pink, this pink hardener is for brush on molds. That's why we're doing it. I'm gonna put on a brush on mold. I just wanna distribute it all around. Easy peasy, quick and dirty. All right, very nice. Let's just get this all goobered out there. And we'll spread her all around. What you can do to help promote the bubbles and the heat doesn't hurt either is you run a heat gun. And the heat gun will help to pop out the bubbles. They're going to rise out anyway and be pretty bubble free. The print coat was perfectly bubble free, so we shouldn't have any bubbles in the casting. Uh, we can push these bubbles a little harder to pop out. Same drill as before. We start the shell on the inside this time 
with a coat of epoxy gel coat. This time I experimented and didn't put any release agent on the rubber to see if I could reduce the holidays. And I was pretty confident that the epoxy would play nice with the rubber anyway. And as you can see, we got many fewer holidays. Just as before, I smoothed out the shell with epoxy sculpt and made it smoother and stronger. And it's just layer after layer after layer of fiberglass. This is a lightweight cloth and it conforms well to the surface. And if you build up enough layers, it makes it nice and strong. Plenty to do on this project next week. We gotta finish this mold and then we gotta pour clear resin, which is always a shaky proposition. <laughs> I hope you come back and see how that goes. If you like this video, hit the like button and I will see you next week.